Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth. Uh, just a heads up, probably only three episodes this week because I'm losing my recording day to the holiday. So I'm going to try to at least do episodes for Tuesday and, and Wednesday. Uh, Final Fantasy is just a little bit easier for me to, to find time to do throughout the week. So, so that's what's happening. All right. Anyway, we were looking around here, and we still don't know where the blade of the Babylon's knife went. Could it be that the killer walked away with it? Okay. It looks like all the souvenirs suffered some damage from the fire. I just don't believe it. Murder on top of arson? What a disgrace to the name of the Yadagaratsu. The fake Yadagaratsu is guilty of much more than just theft, it seems. I know, because if it were me, my first priority would have been to loot this bookshelf. You would steal ordinary souvenirs that you can buy virtually anywhere? You can't buy them anywhere. Each one is specific to a location and has its own value. And items that have memories attached to them are the most valuable of all. You could really rob someone of their valuable memories just like... Could you really rob someone of their valuable memories just like that? Uh, no, because even if I take the souvenir, I can't take the owner's memories. Hmm, a grandfather clock. This one resembles the one in Alabast. No, oh, that clock has been with us since back when we were still Kadopia. This is one big clock. Hey, does this one have a bird that pops out like a cuckoo clock? <laughs> I'm sorry, but no. Oh, I'm sure you love its chime. Really? It's going to be 11 soon, so maybe I'll get to hear it then. At that time already? Time sure flies by when I'm involved in an investigation. Oh, it's not that late. The night's only just begun. Okay, it's not good for you to stay up late, you know. Yes, Gramps. Oh, I, I, I empathize with Edgeworth. <laughs> oh, it's 10 o'clock. It's too late. I need to get to bed. Oh, did I, did I look at this? It appears that Mr. Cochin's body has been taken, taken in for an autopsy. The white outline is all that is left to tell the tale of his murder. Okay. I feel like I've been everywhere, though. Did I look at everything here? I'm pretty sure I did. Did I... It would appear that this desk also fell victim to the fire. But it didn't look too damaged. Oh, I think we can rifle through this drawer a bit. Hmm, I suppose we really should take a look. Oh, did I, I did I miss this the first time or could I not? I mean, that looks suspicious. This is a rather unusual shape for a notepad. I suppose this must be another souvenir from somewhere. Oh, is it the shape of Kodopia? Oh, wait, what's that? It seems that the contents of this drawer survived the fire rather well. Now that's a sturdy desk. I guess that's the value of solid wood construction. Let's see if there's anything useful left in here, Mr. Edgeworth. Wait, what? Oh, wait a second. Hold on. <gasps> I was right! Oh, that's why they made a, a note of that. Is this spot somehow connected to any of the evidence I hold? No. Well, I wanted to look at what it actually said. The shape of this notepad matches the shape of the note we found. Oh, it's just, it's the whole pad, okay. Hey, you're right. What is it? It looks like something straight out of Monument Valley. Oh, yes, that notepad is a souvenir from somewhere in your country. I've been collecting them for the purpose of studying them, you see. Yes, I do. You do seem to be quite passionate about it. Oh, would you like to see my souvenir collection? I'd love to show it to you. Should they have been burnt to a crisp by the fires? Ambassador Polano, I wonder if you might recognize the handwriting on this note. Hmm, this looks like Manny's handwriting. Oh. Was he trying to have Master Mask steal the real statue? But 
someone else switch them, it seems. I see, in that case. Oh, did you figure something out? This note was found in Alabast. Specifically, it was found being firmly grasped by the murdered Damask 2. Damask 2, then this note. Yes, it was a request from Mitch, Mr. Cochin for Damask 2 to steal the Primitic statue. What, Manny? Tried to steal Alabast Primitic statue? We would know for sure if we could run a handwriting analysis. Ambassador, do you have any documents that are written by Mr. Cochin? Uh, uh, yes, I can gather a few and give them to you. I'll have to ask Detective Gumshoe later to run the analysis. I can't believe that Manny would even think of doing something like this. Do you have any idea as to why he would have requested the theft of the statue? There is one possibility, but mind you, it's just my personal speculation. Anything you can tell me would be of great help, Ambassador. Wait, wait, uh, alright, so tell me... Job for Damask 2. Yeah, what did you got? I believe that you said you might have an idea as to why Mr. Cochin hired Damask 2. Actually, I fear it may be my fault. As I was telling you earlier, we were to determine which statue was the real one as part of today's event. But because of the autograssi and the fire here, that got cancelled, didn't it? <laughs> I'm actually relieved the rest of the event has been cancelled. Freezy Babel statue, well, it's just a replica. And did Mr. Cochin know about that about Babel's product statue? Of course he knew. That's why he was the only person I can consult with. We have to do something once our statue is revealed as a replica. As to be expected, I was very nervous today, as this would impact our country's authority. Yes, I understand. Well, when I told Manny my concerns, he said, let me handle it, it'll be alright. I'll find a way to make sure you're the ambassador of the reunited Codopia. At the time, I thought he was just trying, to, just trying to cheer me up. But when I saw that note, I realized he was serious. Wait. Mr. Cochin conducted a lot of business behind your back. I assume he did all that to ensure that you are the next Codopian ambassador? But why was he trying so hard, I wonder? Mm, I'm suspicious of you. But it's a little too obvious. Hmm, but everything was like working out to this guy's favor. Why would Cochin do that? He was so much better getting things done than I ever was or will be. Not the answer to why he was trying so hard yet. But I suspect he had an ulterior motive in mind beyond just simple kindness. Well, alright, that's a given. So what was he going to get out of... Was it so that he could continue, like, manipulating? I wonder... Polano? I, I lost his name for a second. Yeah, so he could manipulate Polano. Oh, there you are, Mr. Edgeworth. Detective Gumshoe, have you collected the information that I requested? Yup, got it all right here, sir. Here you go, okay. Feel free to take a look. It's for you, after all. What is all this, Gummy? It's all the information on this room that I got from the Embassy and Interpol people. Now we know exactly how this room was before and after the fire. Good work, Detective. Ah, oh, it was nothing, sir. I'm an expert at getting people to talk. Wow, you two remind me so much of my father and Uncle Bad. What do you mean? As prosecutor and detective, your dynamic is just like theirs back in the day. <clears throat> Except wasn't her dad like a really bad defense or uh, prosecutor? And Bad was a really good detective. Well, don't you worry. I'm going to find my own wonderful partner someday. And when I do, I'm going to become a good Yadagratsu, just like my father, right? Please don't, don't ask me questions, which I have no answers to, okay? However, I can say it is truly a wonderful thing to find a partner you can trust. <laughs> you bet! So right now, Mr. Edgeworth, well, I'd like to ask you for a favor. Yes? That gadget, Mr. Thief, is it? That thing you call your secret weapon. Oh, you mean Little Thief. <laughs> You're coming to rely on it, aren't you? 
I, I don't need a crutch like that. I'm only asking because I need it for the investigation. But it's not a crutch. I just need it. But it's not a crutch. But I need it. It's essential. But it's not a crutch. I don't. And I don't need it. From the information Detective Gumshoe gathered and the ambassador's testimony, I'd like you to please recreate this room as it was during the third floor fire. You got it. All right, here we go. Dark skies of evening, where no other bird dares take wing, one alone remains all-seeing. Now, witness the true power of a real, modern-day Robin Hood. This is a neat mechanic. Like, obviously not all that grounded in reality, but... Like, it's not so far-fetched, and the, the mechanic is worthwhile. It seems there are other... Th there are other things besides what the ambassador mentioned that have changed. It's possible that we might find the escape route the person K saw used as well. Ooh, what is this? This is some sort of light show I was not told about. This is the power of a true vigilante. It's recreating the room with the info I inputted. Really? That is certainly one interesting device you have there, Miss Verde. And now everyone knows about it. <laughs> I believe it's about time we return to our investigation. Okay. What do I want to start with first? Start with this thing that fell. It's the charred remains of a fallen ceiling fan. Oh, I've seen a few of these before. They spin around and around and play music. I believe you're thinking of a musical mobile for babies. <laughs> the one we got for our kid had a bunch of video game songs loaded on it. Sadly, I think that predates playing Ace Attorney, so there's no Ace Attorney stuff on there. Plus, it, my, my brother was the one who got it for us, so he... He put the music on there. And he, uh, he, he chose well. I'll give him that. Yes, that's it. But they're nothing alike. They're totally alike. They spin those babies right round like a record. <laughs> Fantastic. I see. I guess I can see how you might think that. Okay, how about the... Fire? Oh, wait. Oh, I see a few things. These must have been the large green flames Ambassador Polano saw. With flames like these, it's no wonder he couldn't get in. Okay, by the time you came into this room, had the fire already been put out? Yeah, the fire had died out or something by that time. And this fire in here only burned from the time the fire started on the third floor until the Yadagaratsu appeared and caused a stir in Babel, I suppose. I guess Mr. Plano was just lucky enough to run into this fire as it was burning, huh? Yes, you could put it that way. And since you were the first to discover the body, we can assume that no one else entered the room until that time. No one other than the person you were chasing, of course. I knew it! That person I saw was definitely up to no good. I mean, that person could even be Mr. Cochin's killer. This is very likely to be the case. After all, that person came into this room before you, and must have chosen this room precisely because they knew no one would be in here. Okay, then maybe the green fire was where it was to prevent anyone from coming in? But then, what did the person set on fire to make the green flames? The ink. Whatever it is that person burned, it made a rather sizable- Oh, oh, in addition to that. And since the fire is green, well, we've seen something that burns green, right? It's a bit tinier than these flames, but you get what I mean. Yes, and I do believe that what you're thinking of is exactly why those flames are green. Which fire-related piece of evidence burns the same color as these green flames? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Is it the ink or is it what fire-related piece of evidence burns, this, burns the same color? Is it the ink or the lantern? Because the lantern itself burns green. 
I think I think it's the lantern. Silhouette Lantern. Its green flame comes from the wit crystal oil it's burning. Which is the same stuff used in the in the ink. Okay. Yeah, that's the fire I was thinking of too. I love the green it gives off. I think we've now established that the green flames were caused by wit crystal oil. Furthermore, we know that there's only one other thing made from wit crystal oil. Oh, you mean that thing Mr. Plano was mistaken about, right? Yes, precisely. As we found out earlier in our investigation. Um, what? I don't get it. Can you fill me in, sir? Fine, I suppose I'll explain it in a way that even you can understand. Uh, challenge accepted? This is a thing made from wet crystal oil that Ambassador Plano was mistaken about. There's only one other thing we have that's made of that. Special wit crystal oil based ink. Yeah. That's gotta be it. Babbly's ink is made from wit crystal oil. Oh, so it should burn the same color as the flames in the lantern, right? Yes, precisely. However, the green flames in this room were not from a bottle of Babbly's ink. Because we found the ink Mr. Cochin used on his desk, right? Yes, however, we know that Mr. Cochin was smuggling the ink in massive quantities. Now, what do you suppose he made using all that ink? I believe what he made with that ink is the answer to what gave birth to the green flames. Oh yeah, I'm beginning to really feel the energy coming for you, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> it would appear that I finally found it. The smuggling ring, smuggling ring's real goal. Made of Babbley's ink, this is the source of the green flames. What? Made... something made from Babbley's ink? The... The lantern isn't made from the ink- <gasps> Oh! Made with Babbley's ink! I forgot about that! Okay. All right. Yeah, we knew we knew that already. I I was like, ooh, this is a big revelation that these things were made from Babbley's ink. It wasn't. Take that. What would consume the gr that great of a volume of ink to make? That would be the counterfeit bills that the smuggling ring made and are circulating in Jingfa. You're kidding. You're saying it was Mr. Coach who made the counterfeit bills? Yeah, it's looking that way. I am. I believe you could even go so far as to say that he stole Babel's printing press. Ambassador Cochin had permission to freely use the printing press, correct? Well, yes, and I do remember seeing him use it in the middle of the night, and I didn't ask questions because I thought it was none of my business. Plus, he's helping me, so... But never did I think he was using it for such a foul deed. Ambassador, because of your secretary's crimes, you will need to be investigated as well. Uh, yes, I suppose so. We've caused a bit of trouble for a few countries, haven't we? Here, have these coupons to our buffet. It's my du duty to search out all who shielded Mr. Cochin and concealed his crime. For they are the ones who started the fire in order to destroy the evidence. Okay. I see a few other things I want to look at. It looks like all the souvenirs suffered from some damage from the fire. I don't believe it. Murder on top of arson? What? Oh. Yep. Okay, we saw this already. But I can't skip it. Uh, we saw this already. Uh, That's not what I was trying to look at. I wanted to look at the clock. Come on. Or is that... Is it the same thing? Oh, no, there we go. This grandfather clock, it was apparently in a different position before the fire. According to the staff members, the clock was flush against the wall before the fire, sir. Which means that most likely it was moved by someone during the fire. 
Speaking of which, it's totally 11 o'clock now, but I don't hear any chiming. Hmm, oh, that's odd. It was still chiming right on the dot of every, uh, of every hour this morning. Maybe the fire damaged its internal mechanisms or something. Oh, yeah. Ambassador Plano, maybe take a look inside that clock. Did someone go in and, like, change the time? Mm, sure, go right ahead. Detective Gumshoe, if you could please inspect the insides of this clock. Uh, yes, sir, I'm on it. Miss Dadgeworth, I found this inside. It, oh, looks like a length of wire. So this is what caused the clock to stop chiming. Now, why would they want the clock to stop chiming? But what was a long length of wire doing inside this clock in the first place? Or was that not the goal? Was the goal to hide the wire? Hmm. They think no one would find it there? I guess you couldn't really throw it in the fire. Hmm. Why would someone do this? It's such a valuable clock. It sounds like it wasn't Mr. Palato that put the wire in there. Then perhaps it was Mr. Cochin's killer who did. Alright, well, I'll take a look at that. It looks like one of the Babylese knives is already missing before the fire began. So it would seem, especially since the other two knives' handles were burned away. The remaining handle was swapped out with the handle from the real murder weapon. And Babel's national treasure was stolen. Poor Babel, don't you think? I'm sure I would lump the replica statue in with the rest of Babel's woes. Alright, take a look at this. So Babel is really into pushing their tourism industry, huh? Yes, it would appear that way. You know, I'd really love to take a trip. Hey, why don't we take one after this case? I, I don't know why I blanked there. Do you already have a destination in mind? Well, ideally, I'd like to go someplace where I can continue my thief training. Well, if you want to learn the fine art of stealth, perhaps you should visit the studio where they make the Jam and Ninja TV show. Hey, that's actually a really good idea, Mr. Edgeworth. Can't believe she took me seriously. And then there's... The national symbol of bat. No, I'm trying to look at the fan. Down here. There's nothing especially strange about it. It just mirrored the butterfly gain an antenna since we last saw it. Even if it did, would it really have any bearing on our case, Kay? Oh, it could. Oh, there we go. That looks like a very comfortable chair. Well, it doesn't look all that broken, so why don't you try sitting in it? No, I'd better not. It's very important that we preserve the crime scene at all times. Wait, but you're always touching all sorts of things at crime scenes. It's because I'm a prosecutor and it's part of my job to examine things. And my job is to be a great thief. Which is exactly why you are not allowed to touch anything. Wait, why is- why can't I... Eh? I don't understand. It's- it's highlighted. You can see the Alabastian Embassy through this window. So where were you when you were investigating over there, Mr. Edgeworth? Hmm, ah, you can see it from here. I was there on the fifth floor. That's where Damask 2 was killed. What? You don't mean THE Mass Damask 2? Ah, poor guy. As a fellow second generation thief, I just can't turn a blind eye to this. Even though Damask 2 is merely an imposter of the original. Yeah, we read that already for sure. Fireplace, huh? So Babel's offices have them too. Oh yeah, we read read that already. <coughs> huh. Climb inside and we can play hide and seek. No, yeah, we I'm pretty sure we saw all this. We saw that. Uh, we haven't talked to you since we found stuff. Yeah, oh, cause, can I present anything? Ambassador Plano, I was wondering if you might have some thoughts on this. Oh, alright. Yep, yeah, I get it, you're gonna give me coupons. Uh, 
uh, do we have anything else? No. How about the, the money? I can't believe that Papley's Inc. was being used in such an evil scheme. If people were to find out, that would really tarnish the global image of Babel. Oh, this is really bad. Really, really bad. Oh, Babel's in a vine now. Ugh. The dismirror to his words not match his facial expressions. <laughs> it's true. Oh, what about this? Nope. Although we got more coupons. Is there something? Oh, we haven't talked to Gumshoe. What do you have to say? Detective, you took part in the initial babble of investigation, correct? Yep, sure did. I also helped put out both fires, sir. But that first fire took me by surprise. I had a tough time escaping the fifth floor. First I tried the elevator, but I guess someone else had the same idea because it was in use. If I hadn't remembered to use the stairs at that point, I'd have been burnt to a crisp. Wait, that's odd. We always want our staff that in case of fire, it's dangerous to use the elevator. Oh? Maybe someone wrote it in a fit of panic. Detective, did you see the Yadakaratsu that came into the Babylon's Embassy at all? Babylon's Empire? <laughs> I didn't personally. And the other staff members told me they never got a good look at the person either, sir. Hmm, I wonder if you could tell me a bit more about what you discovered, Detective. Alright, and we will listen to more of what Gumshoe has to say in the next episode. Hope you all are still enjoying this. Hmm, like, Polano's suspicious because, like I said, he just, he keeps benefiting from things, but he also... I don't want to say he doesn't have incentive. He, it's almost too obvious. Uh, that has me thinking it, it's not him, but we'll see. Anyway, that's going to do it for me. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.